we have it in log form now. To write it in exponential form, log base 3 of 81 equals 4 means that 3 to the 4th power equals 81. 3 to the 4th power equals 81. And that checks out. It works. We do it again. Grab the base, take it to that power, equals 32. So 2 to the 5th equals 32. My students used to call this the log life cycle. Like, grab that to that equals that. And it would almost be too easy if it were 2 to the 32, right? It's 2 to that one equals 32. The log is the opposite of the exponent. It's the inverse, so it switches the x and the y. So that's why it's working. We just do it again with practice. Log base 4 of 2 equals 1 half means 4 to the 1 half equals 2. So 4 to the 1 half equals 2. And this makes sense. The square root of 4 is 2. This guy here, log base 2 of 1 16th equals negative 4, means that 2 to the negative 4 power equals 1 16th. 2 to the negative 4 equals 1 16th. And that checks out as well. Now we go in reverse. They give our exponential form. What would this look like in a log form? Well, that's your base. So it's log base 2. And then it's not going to be the 3 there, it's going to be the 8 there. So log base 2 of 8 equals 3. And you can check it, 2 to the 3rd equals 8. This was always the example I would write on the top of my paper if ever I got confused. I knew log base 2 of 8 was 3 because 2 to the 3rd was 8. We do it again. So grab the base, that's your base, log base 7. It's not going to be the 3 there, that would be too easy. It's going to be the 343 there, and that equals the power, which is 3. We do it again. We have log, grab the base. The base is 8 to that power, 1 8th, equals negative 1. We check it. 8 to the negative 1 equals 1 8th. Checks out. We do it again. Log, grab that base. It's 4 to the one zero point one two five equals negative 3 halves. I'll leave that up to you. It does check out. Um, you can verify that 4 to the negative 3 halves equals 0.125. All right, what else have we got? So in every equation up here, they've just been telling us like what the answer is. They're, they're just having us kind of bounce between forms. It's almost, it's, but now we have to figure them out for ourselves. Like what is the log base 8 of 84? Log base 8 of 64. So we want to know what that is. And whenever I'm doing this to start, I just say that equals something. That equals x. And I turn it into a little equation. And then I can solve it no matter what. So I grab the base. And so if it's a log equation, I undo it by writing it in its exponential form, just like we did way up there. So I know that 8 to some power equals 64. What power do I raise 8 to to get 64? And it's like, oh, we know that one. That's 2. So log base 8 of 64 is 2. Check. We do it again. What power do you raise 2 to to get 8? So you're wondering 2 to what power gives me 8? 2 to what power gives me 8? Oh, that's 3. 2 to the 3rd is 3. 2 times 2 times 2 is 3, is 8. <laughs> and so uh, log base 2 of 8 is 3. We do it again. What power do we raise 5 to to get 125? If you don't know, you just kind of write it this way, 5 to what power gives you 125? It's like, yeah, I know that. That's 3. 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. 5 to the 3rd equals 125. We do it again. Uh, 3 to what power equals 3? Right? So it's 3 to some power gives me 3. 3 to what power gives me 3? Oh, that's just to the first power. A lot of these you can write without doing this, but I show it to you because when you get stuck, you just write it as an exponential and you'll be able to solve that. Because some of these might get harder. This one, oh, oh, where'd the base go? Do we forget to write it? No. Uh, whenever we write log without a base, log like this is the same thing. If you see log of x and there's no base, it's just because we're too lazy to write log base 10 of x. This is called our common log. It comes up so often that we just dump the base. Just like the square root, we never write the index of 2 there because it comes up so often we're just too lazy to write it. So here, you can write it in if you want, log base 10. So I'm wondering what power do I raise 10 to to get 1,000? So 10 to some power gives me 1,000. So x must be 3 because 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. 
So 10 to the third is 1,000. It's 3. We do it again. Uh, th 3, wondering what this equals. 3 to some power gives me 1 third. 3 to some power gives me 1 third. Well, to flip it over, I want a negative in the exponent. So 3 to the negative 1 gives me 1 third. Check. We go on. So now it's a little backwards. It's 49 to some power gives me 7. 49 to some power gives me 7. Now, some people might see, well, the square root of 49 is 7, and that would mean that uh, 49 to the 1 half. Now, if you don't like that, go back to, remember we did a whole bunch of equations with um, uh, exponential equations. And when you have exponential equations, like with an x up in the exponent, your first attempt is to um, try to write them with the same base. And you're like, oh, I can write 49 as 7 squared. So this will be 7 squared to the x equals 7. So 7 to the 2x equals 7. So if the bases are the same, the powers are the same. So 2x equals 1, so x will be a half. And that's, I mean, if you might have been able to see it just right off the top of your head, like, oh, square root of 49 is 7, so that must be a half. But again, some of these are going to get trickier, and you just don't want to be floundering, so this is kind of a way to do it no matter what. So write it in its exponential form, try to get the same base, and then once you get the same base, set the exponents equal, and you'll be good no matter what. Uh, next problem, they didn't give us the base again, so now we know that if they don't write in the base, it's a 10. So we're wondering 10 to some power gives me 100. So x should be 2, because 10 times 10 is 100. 10 squared is 100, so x should be 2. And we do it again. Uh, 25 to some power gives me 5. So write that with the same base. I can write 25 as 5 squared, so it'll be 5 to the 2x equals 5. So 2x equals, bases are the same, power should be the same, so 2x should equal 1. So x should be a half. It makes sense. Five, 25 to the 1 half power is the square root of 25. That's 5 checks out. Ah, keep going. Practice makes perfect. Base is 10. We can write that in. 10 to some power gives me 1 tenth. Uh, to flip it over, x should be negative 1. Same thing here. 3 to some power gives me 1 ninth. Write them with the same base. 3 to the x equals 3 to the negative 2. x equals negative 2. We do it again. 81 to some power equals 3. 3 to the 4x equals 3 to the first. So 4x equals 1, so x equals 1 fourth. Whew, going strong. All right, what else have they got for us? So more equations with logs. To undo logs, their op inverse operation is exponents. So we just do the same thing we were doing way back in 1, the same thing we've been doing here. Uh, what log base 2 of x means in its exponential form is that 2 to the 5th is x. And, oh my gosh, I've solved for x. x is all alone and lonely, so x equals 2 to the 5th, so x equals 32. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, it works. We do it again. Uh, this would mean 2 to the x equals 16. 2 to the x equals 16. So, now we have an exponential equation. Try to write them with the same base first, and oh my gosh, I can. So... 16 is 2 to the 4th, so if the bases are the same, the power should be the same. x equals 4. We do it again. 5 to the 4th equals x. 5 to the 4th equals x. Oh, I'm done. I'm solved for x. It's So 5, times, five to the 4th is 625, and that's what x is. Boom. Do it again. x to the 3rd equals 1,000. So some power to the third is a thousand. Uh, so to undo, well, in this case you can either just see it, that would be ten, ten cubed is a thousand. Uh, or you solve whatever comes out of this, something cubed, to undo cubing, you take the cube root of both sides. So x is going to be the cube root of a thousand, so x is going to be ten. Uh, and it makes sense, ten times ten times ten is a thousand. We're good. Right else have we got? More stuff here. 
We're still evaluating. Here we're getting some special ones, but they're all the same. So it's 6 to the x is 1. So what do I raise 6 to to get 1? Uh, 0. Anything to the 0 power is 1. So uh, 6 to the 0 is 1. That checks out. Uh, this guy here, 5 to some power gives me 5. Oh, that's just 1. Check. This guy here, it looks weird, but it's the same. Grab that base, 2 to some power equals that whole thing there, 2 to the 5th. Oh, well, if 2 to something equals 2 to the 5th, then that something must be 5. This is your cancellation property. The, the the base and that base are the same, they knock each other out, just give you that 5. Happens all the time. This guy here, the base is 10 because we didn't bother to write it. That equals something, 10 to some power equals 1. Again, anything to the 0 power is 1. So no matter what the base is, log is 1. So they're trying to hone in on the fact that the log base be any base, any base you want of 1 will always equal 0. Uh, and then this guy here, if we did it, we drew in the imaginary, well, the unwritten 10, and we know that 10 to some power equals 10 to the third. Okay, so we want to know, again, they didn't write the base, so the base is 10, so 10 to what power gives me 10 to the third? Oh, well, x must be 3. And uh, that's actually a property of logs. If this base and that base match, they knock each other out. Because again, it was what power do you raise 10 to to get 10 to the third? It must just be that exponent. So that's a property you could write up here. If ever you have the log base b of b to the x, that's just going to be x. They knock each other out. What power do you raise b to to get b to the x? Oh, it's x. It makes sense. All right. Same thing with this one. People get really scared when they see this thing, but when that base and that base match, they knock each other out, so you just get a 3. The reason for it being is this log represents the power, the power you need to raise 7 to to get 3. Well, if you raise 7 to that power, the power you raise 7 to to get 3, you will get 3. And that's how it works, because we don't... Yeah. So... We can write that up here too. If you have b to the log base b of x, that'll equal x also. So if that base and that base match, they undo each other, you just get that x. So those are your cancellation properties there. Moving right along, uh, that base, and since we didn't write the base for this log, that was assumed to be a 10. So since that base and that base match, they knock each other out, and you just get that 5. Now here we have our first ln. Do not be scared of ln. So many students freak out when they see an ln. All an ln is, is you don't see a base there. It's just because we're too lazy to write log base e. Uh, so it's just, if you want, no one does this, but if you want, you can rewrite every time you see an ln as log base e of x, and that way you can remember that the base is e. What's e? Don't be scared of e. e is a fancy number that shows up a ton in nature. And so it gets a special name, just like pi. It's like 2.71. You can treat it just as you would a 3. So if you freak out with an E, just replace it with a 3, and you'll be okay. All right. So this, it's uh, E. And uh, we're wondering E to what power gives you 1? E to what power gives you 1? Well, anything to the 0 power gives you 1. So that x must be 0 for the same reason we had log base, any base of 1 should give you 0, so even the ln of 1 should be uh, 0. So 0. And we keep moving. So an e also works. Uh, the base is e, so that base and that base match, so they knock each other out, and you just get that 4. Uh, same thing here, that base and that base match, so they knock each other out, you just get 4. If you were to do the whole rigmarole, it's a uh, uh, e, let me erase my answer, it would be that base to that power gives you e to the fourth, right? So e to the x gives you e to the fourth, so x must be four. Oh. So what power do you raise e to to get e to the fourth? It must be four. 
Uh, again, the e to the ln of x is just x. That's your pure cancellation property. That's in that base match. It's good. Uh, that base map base match. Knock each other out. Give each, give 